So here's the dream for any dividend growth investors, finding a company offering a yield of at least 4% with a dividend growth rate in the mid single digit. This is the type of business that would try for years to come. You put that in a box and you can retire on it and just smile. Dividend Growth Investors, bonjour. My name is Mike Yehu and I'm the founder of Dividend Stocks Rock and I also have this YouTube channel to help you invest with more conviction so you can enjoy your retirement. And today we're going to talk about Brookfield Renewable. So if you have missed my two past videos, I've covered Brookfield Asset Management, Brookfield Corporation and Brookfield Infrastructure. So please go back to the channel or just give me a like, subscribe to the channel so you'll get those videos. And at the bottom of each of them in the link description and even on this one, you can download my complete report on the Brookfield family. Uh, this is a huge conglomerate of a lot of complicated companies and today we're going to do a deep dive in Brookfield Renewable. Uh, in that report, we're going to tell you also what is the difference between BEP and BEPC. So you have trust units or corporate shares. They trade on both the New York Stock Exchange and the TSX. So regardless if you're Canadian or American, you can buy those companies and you can decide if you want to have a little bit more yield or a little bit more growth. But in the end, it's all the same business. So Brookfield Renewable, we're talking about almost 80 million of dollars in assets, which is kind of crazy, right? Uh, half of it is in hydroelectricity and they target a dividend growth rate between five to nine percent. So when I was talking about mid to high single digit, we're right there. Currently, the yield is slightly above four percent. So for 30 440. Um, so definitely a good stock for a retiree that is just wanting to have a good payment and on top of that making sure that it fights inflation year after year. So buying power, your buying power is not affected by it. And there you go. You get this amazing business. So one thing I really like about Rookfield Renewable, it's his geographic diversification. So the company focuses on obviously renewable energy. So we're talking about hydroelectricity, which is about half of the business. And then we have wind and solar and we have some storage and distribution as well. What is great is they are present in North America, Latin America, in Europe, and also in Asia. So if you're looking for a world exposure company, you just found it. So most of the time when you're looking at a utility stock, it is based in a like a province or a states or like a few ones, but it's very hard to find one that is diversified across the world. You get that with Brookfield Renewable. So while the business may seem complex at first, when you look at this graph, you'll understand most of it. So Brookfield Renewable is all about renewable energy. Half of it is hydroelectricity, 20% in wind energy, 15% in solar, and then you have distribution and storage for another 12%. The bulk of the business is still in North America with 62% of their assets being based there, but still another 20% in South America and then 16% in Europe and a little bit in Asia Pacific. The probably the biggest advantage that you have here, especially when you're looking at renewables. And I know that some of you got bitten by Algonquin Power in the past, which was one third renewable, two thirds classic utilities. Renew uh, Brookfield Renewable is 100% renewable and they have long term contract. We're talking on an average of like 14 years of contract where they know how much they're going to make money every single year. So you have to understand here about the business model, we're talking about patient capital. We're talking about hydroelectricity power plants that will be there for like 50, 100 years old. So when the market is looking at one quarter and panics because interest rates are high, Brookfield is investing for the next century. So when you think about that and put that perspective, you understand that short term fluctuation should not matter much in your investment in such a company. So now you're going to tell me, but Mike, how can I make sure that BEP is not another Algonquin and how can I make sure that it's going to grow? Well, here's the thing. 
they expect to grow their FFO per share, which is the most important metric. So it's the fund from operation. You do not look at earnings because they have huge investment that will impact their earnings because they have also huge amortization, right? So you look at fund from operation per share and they expect it to grow double digit between 22 all the way up to 2027. Uh, there's inflation escalation in the contracts and we have seen that in the latest quarter they said you know what our revenue and ffo are growing mostly because those those contracts comes with inflation protection so that is one thing that goes up they always focus on getting better margin they have economies of scale because they're huge businesses and they have this ability to deploy massive capital to improve their margin obviously they are always growing their pipeline so they have a lot lot of renewable energy that is on their way right now and a lot of more projects and they also grow by acquisition which provides them a very good way to buy assets with a low price improve their margin with their knowledge or expertise and their capital and after that what they do well they do something that is called asset recycling so asset recycling is not necessarily a concept that a lot of people understand just because you're thinking, well, the business is all about producing energy, so why would they sell their assets that is producing energy and then use that capital to do something else, right? But here's the thing, they made those acquisition when people are like, this company is struggling, they, they don't have like that, that good margin or it's not that efficient and Brookfield comes into play, add their expertise, their capital and everything, they revamp the asset and once it's a productive and very interesting investment, they can turn around and sell it at a better price. So it's the classic buy low, sell high and then what they do with that capital well they just reallocate it into more assets more projects because they have this expertise they have done that for several years and it continually working so that part was all about how the company will continue to grow in the next five to ten years but now you're going to tell me but mike another problem that we had with algon quinn is the debt structure so algon quinn had about 24% of its total debt in floating rates, which was an amazing idea for the past 10 years until we reached 22. And then their interest rate, the interest payment became a burden. And this is where everything started to collapse. Well, when you look at Brookfield, you, we have a completely different type of structure. So we have 12 years of fixed income. So 97% uh, not fixed income, but fixed debt. So 97% of their debt is on fixed rate and it is laddered throughout a 12 years period. So whatever happens today will affect roughly 10 or 8% of their total debt structure year after year. So now we're in entering into a phase of high interest rate. It may last for a year or two, depending on what's going on with the, uh, with the economy. The Fed at the beginning of March said, we're gonna increase our rates by 50 points. And then a week later, we had this big bank collapse with Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. And then the market is not too sure what's gonna happen with rates going forward. So just to show you how it could move very fast. So maybe in 24 and 25, we're gonna talk about lower interest rate and then Brookfield will continue to navigate through that without any problem. The other thing that is super important is we have 91%, so most of their debt is non-recourse financing, which means that if you have a power plant where you have a loan on it, so kind of like a mortgage on a house, for example, the bank can go after that asset, but it cannot go after the entire Brookfield Corporation behind it or Brookfield Renewable. So they just say, okay, you know what? You don't pay for that asset. Well, take it back because they have the rest of the business that is being protected because the debt has only a lien on this specific asset. So if they're making a mistake at one point, they're just gonna let it go and they protect their core business. I'm not saying it's ethical or it's something that you should do or it's like a great thing, but from a business perspective, it's the best way to protect your entire business model. So now I've been telling you how Brookfield renewable has been an amazing business for about 10 minutes and if you want to know more about it and how like we, we did a deep dive on every single part of the Brookfield family you can download my report right there uh, in the link description 
However, there are downsides because if you look at the dividend triangle right now, what you can see is the stock price is pretty much going down since 2021 and it's not seeing to be performing that much and a lot of investors bought it for the past two years and now they're just thinking, but Mike, I'm losing double digit on my investment so I'm not convinced it's a good thing. Well, here's the thing. Uh, right now, renewable energy doesn't have much love and attention on the market, right? Everybody's all about oil and gas. Mind you, now it's this interest starting to fade as well, but there's a lot of energy money that went from the renewable energy going back to oil and gas in 2020 and 2021. So that explains a part of it. The other part is obviously that the market is narrow focused on the current interest rate stage. As we have seen, yes, it will have an impact on Brookfield Renewable, but not that much because they have 12 years of laddered of debt maturity. So yes, what they will re renew this year and next year, it's going to cost more than what it was 10 years ago. But for the rest of it, likely it is going to smooth out the, the interest payment and it's not going to be a major a uh, impact on their business model and on their FFO per share. When you look at the dividend triangle, you can see that revenue is going up, the FFO is going up, and the company is projecting double digit FFO per share growth for the next five years, which is definitely interesting. And one of the things that is like the most important part here is you can see that the business is increasing its dividend by about 5% every single year. So the target between five and 9% right now we're pretty much close to the lower part, so 5-6% per year, but even then, I mean, would you like to invest in a stock with a 4% yield? On top of that, you have like a 4 to 5% dividend increase. That sounds like a pretty good thing, right? Obviously, you're going to go with a lot of market fluctuation. You have to be uh, aware of that. The debt level is always a source of concern. So while right now they show a great debt patterns, it doesn't mean it's gonna continue going forward. If they're making too many bad investment in their pipelines and in their mergers and acquisitions, well then the, like the mergers becomes expensive, their FFO per share will reduce. So what you need to follow going forward, one of the risks is Management is telling you one thing that is, seems very interesting, but now we have to tr see that translation into quarterly earnings and to yearly results. So following this type of business every quarter will ensure that you focus on your investment thesis and you will have an eye on what management says. So far, they've been, um, they've been on track with their expectation and their guidance, so I I decided to invest in Brookfield Renewable a few years ago. Obviously, this is not one of my performing assets at this point in my portfolio, but I'm not thinking about this year or next five years. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the next 25 years, and this is the type of business I want in my portfolio. So again, don't forget to download the full report on the Brookfield family. Give me a thumbs up and let me know about your favorite Brookfield company in the comment below. I'll see you there, and don't forget to stay invested.